Fort Porto is a town in the western region of Uganda. It is the seat of both Kabarole district and the Toro kingdom. Fort Porto is located about 180 kilometers northwest of Mbarara, the largest city in the western region. To be exact, it is 290 kilometers by road west of Kampala, Uganda's capital. Fort Porto is home to three hospitals. Fort Porto Regional Referral Hospital, a 300-bed public hospital administered by the Ministry of Health, it is the largest. The next largest is Holy Family Virika Hospital, a private hospital with a bed capacity of 155, owned by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Fort Porto. Very many tourist attractions are located here, including the famous Amabere Ganyinamuiru, the several beautiful crater lakes, the Rift Valley Escarpment, Queen Elizabeth National Park in the neighborhood, and the amazing tea estates. The Sempaya Hold Springs are found in Semiliki National Park in western Uganda. These amazing springs have high temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius. The force strength and hotness of these springs show the strength of the geographical forces underground. The Semiliki National Park, where these springs are found, was gazetted in 1993. The hot springs can be found or seen in two places. The locals refer to one as being female and the other being male. The track to see these hot springs can lead you to see other forest wonders like the Magbe monkeys, the red-tailed monkey, the black and wild Columbus monkey, lots of these things like the vegetation diversity. There is a tree house in this park that can give you an aerial view of this place. The female Empire hot spring, as many refer to it, is 30 minutes from the mill and is so hot to the extent that hungry hikers can boil bananas and eggs on an instance in these blistering springs.
geographically, hot springs are founded by geothermal heat that boils underground water in the earth's crust, or it can be explained that these geothermal processes force the water to move through the hot rock, then onto the earth's surface. Semiliki National Park is also home to Semiliki River, which is a tributary to River Congo. The forest also houses the Batra community. These are endangered group of people and their lifestyle is so interesting that you ought to experience on a Uganda safari. For bird watchers, this is a haven for you. It's the ideal spot of any birding safari in Uganda. One of the special birds here is a dwarf hornbill, blue kingfisher and the yellow-throated nikata. Of the, of the hot spring, it is of volcanistic, volcanistic activity. So, uh, when the, the, the volcanic happened here, it is not as too explosive like uh, those ones of mountains exploding or doing what. And we have, remember, we're having a block mountain here. So, when the block mountain was formed, it swept off the soils and uh, some bare rocks were left open. Fault block mountains are formed by the movement of large crystal blocks when forces in the earth's crust pull it apart. Some parts of the earth are pushed upward and others collapse down. The surface of the earth can move along these folds. So the volcanic took place in a, uh, in a small amount. So when uh, so rainwater collects underground there through different areas, and uh, we're having lanes of weakness, the vents. So when water after, uh, thinks, after thinking down there then gets collected somewhere, it, it melts with the salt rock, with the salt rock. Then the salt rock, yeah, after melting, then that water makes a solution. That solution continues sinking down up until they meet the molten rocks, which are ever hot. So molten rocks, they are between the mantle and the crust. The mantle is the last earth layer. So uh, after joining the molten rocks, they gain that heat, they, it is heated, what is heated? Then because of that pressure of too much heat, it comes out while bubbling, like what you are seeing right now here. The earth is alive. It does not live like you and me, but the earth is moving and changing and never stays the same. You may see it with your own eyes. Or you may not see it or not feel it happen at all, but it's happening right now beneath our feet. The earth is changing. Let's explore some of the changes. A volcano is an opening in the earth's crust through which lava, volcanic ash, and gases escape. Beneath the volcano, liquid magma containing dissolved gases rises through cracks in the earth's crust. As the magma rises, pressure decreases, allowing the gases to form bubbles. What springs form when water deep below the earth's surface is heated by rocks or other means and rises to the earth's surface. These phenomena are very similar to gases. Unlike gases, many of them form near areas of volcanic activity. Mud pots form when hot spring waters mix with dirt and clay before they reach the earth's surface. And when it comes out here, it is measuring from 98 degrees Celsius. Here it floods, like water floods and covers all those roadblocks, but here it stays like that. Yes. Extremophiles are tiny organisms that thrive in hot springs and other places that are inhospitable to most life on Earth. 
Many people travel to hot springs for relaxation and possible health benefits. A widely accepted definition of a hot spring is a naturally occurring spring of water that is hotter than 98 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 36.7 degrees Celsius, when it flows from the ground. However, this is not a scientific definition and this phenomena can also be defined as a spring of water that is hotter than the surrounding ground and air temperatures. Hot springs will also be referred to as geothermal or thermal springs. Hot springs can form in several ways. One common method is when rain or groundwater is heated up by contact with rocks that have been heated by magma deep beneath the earth's surface. These types of hot springs generally form near areas of volcanic mountains. You know the Bantu how we are. We share some words in different, but in different languages. So, the words that he was using, they they were able enough to pick some words, and they understood each other. So they found the man was not harmful to them. They took him home, and they stayed with him. Uh, like one after one year, they gave him their daughter. Their daughter was called Nyansimbi, and Nyansimbi means money. So this native tribe, they intermarried with the Batoro, so they had that the words, similar to the Toro words. So uh, they picked the man, they stayed with him. After one year, they came back and they, uh, they gave him their daughter, Nyansimbi. They produced some children, like five of them. Uh, then uh, when they came back in the forest to hunt, that man was a good hunter and he knew the forest very well than them. So they, they used that chance to have him. So that man, after hunting, they, he got lost. That man disappeared from the male hot spring. Then they were like, um, what can we do? They tried to trace the dead body at least. They didn't find, but what they found, yes. After staying with them for about six years, and he had already produced five kids, then they tried to search for the dead body. Yes. <laughs> so uh, they tried to trace for the dead body and were to be seen. They only picked three items. They picked the spear, they picked the dog, and the back cloth. You know, by then they never had these sugarfish clothes. So they used the back cloth, and the back cloth was made from fig trees. They could debark the, the, back, uh, uh, the fig tree, they removed the bark. They used the hardest trees in this national, national park, in this forest. Um, mahogany to make the mallets. So those mallets, they used them to heat the backs of those trees to make the bark cloth. Whatever they could heat, it could expand, loses up, and when they sun dry, it makes it, it makes its beautiful color, the brown color. So that was the um, it, uh, it would act as a their back. I mean the cloth at the same time, uh, bed sheets or blankets. So uh, the bark cloth. They had to put it on, they used to use it, and uh, it, it got toned. The dog reached its lifespan, it died, but they, what they managed is, is to preserve the spear. So up to the, no, up to date, to no, up to now, they have never seen that man. So when they went and they formed their wife because of too much love, she hesitated said, no, I'm going back to look for my husband. And um, so the family members, they had to escort the woman to come and look for the husband. Mm. And uh, when they reached, they didn't, they didn't see even a dead body, but they continued hunting for the man for about three days. Then when the wife was like totally confused and she, she was like, 
let me also do something to follow my man. She also disappeared from here. So also they picked the back clothes. Okay, hold on. No. She disappeared. I think the man tried to <laughs> you know by then. <laughs> so they never um, but then they never they never had these religions that we're having today. Mm. They no, they never.